of Ryan's All Things Geek. I'm right here once again at 103.7 FM, Brock University Radio, right here in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Or you can be listening to us live at cfbu.ca. That's right, friends and folks, we are here. This is the week that a lot of you have been waiting for. This is the week I've been waiting for. This is the week my co-host, who you're going to hear about, hear from uh, the second half of the show, has dying, uh, we've all been dying for this show. And I guess dying is the right choice of words for this because we have with us the organizers of the fourth annual Welland Zombie Walk. Yay! Yay! Hooray! We have with us this week, we have Mr. Stephen Lambert. Good to be here. And we also have co-founder, the doctor, James DeCale. Oh, it's been a long time since I've been introduced like that. Thanks for having us, Ryan. Hey, no problem. Thanks for coming out, guys. And you know what? Uh... It just seemed fitting that we went with the doctor. I'm sorry, because uh, from our podcast days, what actually got us going in the radio was the podcast show and our early podcast. Anyone who actually listened to him, you know that uh, you hear the doctor on there quite often. And uh, thank you very much, buddy. We couldn't have done a lot of the show without you. So, uh, guys, well in Zombie Walk, uh, I'm going to start off with you, Steve, if that's cool. Sure. Uh, tell me a little bit more about the, the well in Zombie Walk and how things got started. Well, it's uh, it's our fourth annual. Uh, like I said, we uh, we started it uh, kind of on a whim. Uh, I think probably about a week before we actually planned. It. And I think there uh, I think there was about eight of us on the first walk. Uh, we we had seen it in bigger cities like Toronto. I think Toronto was in about their fourth or fifth year when we started ours. So uh, we thought, uh, why not Welland? Nice. And why not Welland? Why not Welland? Why not Welland? <laughs> well, Welland's got that attitude and has that. Uh panache you know <laughs> that, that it seems you know you, you see everywhere around the place where uh, people make all these little memes about well and kind of make fun <laughs> of it um but the well people they do have a lot of artisticness in them and also a lot of i'd say attitude. i don't know attitude <laughs> yes attitude's probably the best thing to say it's all, it's all well and good right <laughs> Exactly. It's all well and good. That's right. Um, so, James, uh, from your side of things, how did you come, like, how did you and Steve get together, and wh what was it that, what was the initial push that got you guys going with that eight man, the first eight person zombie walk, and also led you on to do the second year? I think I think it was me who was probably one of the first guys that suggested it on social yeah. media that we should just be having a zombie walk alone. My thinking at the time behind it, behind it, I should say, was was just to do something different and fun that hasn't been done in Welland before. Um, so uh, I think, like, as Steve said, you know, about a week beforehand, I threw it on my social media that you know perhaps we should have a zombie walk, and we convinced uh, several people to come out and do that same thing, and we had fun. Um, we, the second year that we did it, uh, we decided to put in a little bit more advanced notice through social media, and. Uh, well, the, the second year was probably the big breakout year for us. How many people would you say were there? I, I, I think we probably had around 100 people the second year. Wow, wow that's a lot of people to come over, 100 people. Yeah. And uh, so on that second year, was there anything different or special that you guys did that year like that, that helped bring more people out? I, I would definitely say, well, I think what, uh, what, what happened there with the second one, which made it the breakout year, was not only did we give it a little bit of advance notice, um, we'll, Around the time, you know, after we'd first uh, announced it, it was about maybe a month ahead of the walk, uh, somebody had asked me through our, our, our Facebook um, uh, group page, um, they just asked if, if they could bring kids along. And I remember at the time, uh, I was reading in our local newspapers, you know, some school was doing the black and orange day instead of Halloween, because we live in this terribly politically correct or sensitive age where we have to, I don't know, dumb down everything and have right. nothing scary. Um, so... Hearing somebody ask if they could bring their kids, you know, they, there was no, it was a no-brainer. Of course you could bring your kids. And around that time, I was doing some research, you know, and I guess they at least have Halloween parades in the United States as an example of about 1900 to 1950. Um, so I've I seen a, a little bit of a, um, a, a parallel to it. Um, so, you know, we said, of course kids can come out. And, uh, well, you know, when we did see the number of attendants who, uh, or participants, I should say, who did attend uh, the second year, about half was under the age of seventeen. I would say so, yeah. Well, so, that, so, like that's a, no, no, that's cool. 
Um, honestly, that's pretty amazing. And for you guys, that's got to feel pretty good as well. Coming up to the second year, and you guys virtually like quadrupled your numbers. Uh, you know, quadrupled. Yeah, it would be. Is that, that a real word? Is that a real word? <laughs> if, it, if so, it is now. Yes, it is in the in the language dictionary of Steve. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's the new Lambert Webster dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Patent pending, of course. <laughs> so, um, so where's the natural? What's the natural progression from there? The second year, you guys get this huge crowd. You quadruplified or whatever uh, the numbers from from the year previous. Where, what's the next step? So you guys go into see, uh, season three. <laughs> you guys go into basically season three, though, into your third year with this. And uh, what's the thinking now? Because at this point, you got to be thinking bigger and better, or how do I top the of last course. year? Because now people are counting on this, right? Yeah. I think, uh, like you said, you know, knowing uh, how many kids came out the second year and just the sheer growth of the attendance, uh, we decided to get uh, a couple of local charities involved, and uh, we started uh, canvassing for uh, sponsors and prize donations, and uh, found two great charities in uh, the Hope Center and Humane Society, which we're also collecting for again this year. And uh, the Canview Drive-In was our uh, our first big sponsor that really got on board last year and made a very generous donation. Uh, big shout out to our friends down at the Canview Drive-In. They just wrapped up their season. Another great year. Another great year. And one of the last true bastions of uh, cinematic viewing out there. Um, there's not very many drive-ins out there. No, and for And for people that are pop culture, not gurus, but just fans, just a fan of cinematics as it is, period. The drive-in is just such a such an experience. Like it's something that you can bring your entire family out to. You know, you can bring uh, your own drinks if you want. <laughs> you know, but but it's it's more of a relaxing atmosphere, and you get two movies for the price of one, and you don't have to worry about the people being loud behind you or in front of you. You're in the comfort of your own vehicle, or even sitting out in front of your own vehicle. I've seen people bring their own Chesterfields for our. Uh, Canadian friends out there uh, and our American friends that would be couches <laughs> out, to, out to the drive-in as well and just set them up in front of their uh, vehicle and watch movies out there. Um, that's a great get that you guys got. How did, how did they get on board? Uh, uh, I approached uh, I approached them last year. Uh, I'm a very regular uh, patron of the, the Canview drive-in and uh, I just thought, you know, well, why not? You know, tie in the whole... At the time, I think they were just starting to do their first retro. Near the end of the season, they like to do the retros uh, movies on the one screen. Right. And uh, they were doing horror-themed movies. Uh, I believe it was uh, The Shining last year. Uh, I've been waiting to see that one on right. the big screen forever, and that was, it was definitely epic. Right. So uh, the, one, the one movie that uh, King hated, though. It, yeah, it was. Yeah, he hate, was, absolutely was, hated that movie. It, it, was, not, it was not a very true adaptation to the book. No, not no, at all. Not, not at all. But... You know what? It, on its own right, it was a fantastic movie, yeah, though. You know, Jack, for, for us, Jack I, Nicholson made the film. Exactly. Nicholson definitely made the well, film. Well, I, I don't know. Um, I know it's Shelley Duvall. <laughs> was it Shelley Duvall or what was the girl that played uh, Popeye? Think, Olive Oil. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Olive Oil, it, yeah. <laughs> which was nice. Here's Johnny. One of, and that was also an improvised line, just in case anyone didn't know that. It was uh, on a website checking out uh, the most famous improvised lines of all time. And that was, like, in the top five. Here's Johnny. Here's Johnny. <laughs> Great line. He did not steal that from Ed McMahon. No, he didn't. <laughs> Just a check from the publisher's clearinghouse. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, we are getting off topic a little bit there. Um, so, you guys got the camera driving because you already had an established relationship there. Um, from there, though, so this is year three. How many how many sponsors are you looking at in year, the third year? year uh, like fourth year. year. Oh, you know, last year. Oh, last, last year, last year, uh, I'd say, I think probably four or five small, smaller local businesses. Candy was our big one. Nice. So, and, and now this year has been the big push. Yeah. All right, and and the the two of you have both been out there canvassing, looking for sponsors. Um, Steve, if you wouldn't mind, just give me some of the sponsors you guys got. Sure. Uh, well, again. Uh, Candy Drive-In stepped up again big this year, uh, gave us uh, almost a $200 donation. Uh, we got uh, Pulp Comics, uh, Downtown Niagara Falls, uh, Enviro Niagara, uh, gave us a nice uh, donation as well as made up some uh, treat bags for the kids this year. Oh, that's nice. uh, I'll mention that right now. Uh, the first uh, 80 kids under 12 this year will receive a free treat bag uh, oh, wow. thanks to our friends down at Enviro Niagara. Wow, so big shout out to Enviro Niagara for stepping yeah. up to the plate and... Uh... Making this even more fun for the kids. Yeah, yeah go ahead, man. Uh, also, we have uh, Lynn's Pet Center, and that's on Victoria Avenue in Welland. Uh, Family Video and Popeyes on uh, Niagara Street in Welland. 
uh, Lead Hair Salon and Spa, and that's downtown Welland, and Craig Hot Rod Photography. Awesome. And you guys even got some charity, like you guys are doing some charity work this year as well. Yeah, yeah. We're collecting non-perishable food items for the Hope Center and as well as pet food items for the Welland District Humane Society. Awesome. So um, I guess uh, I'm going to pose this next one to you, James. Uh, so this year, you guys have, again, stepped things up. Like you guys did a best costume the first time around, right? Uh -huh. Now this year, you're doing you're doing more uh, contest-wise, right? Definitely, uh, I'm, I'm assuming we're doing more contest-wise because we had such a great response from uh, so many people that were so willing uh, to donate some prizes uh, for the categories that we are going to be having for best costumes. Off the top of my head, I'm sure Steve, I, I don't know, I'm sure Steve has a list of uh, all the categories. But I think that that's this year where it really improved was uh, the fact that so many sponsors were so willing to step up to the plate and donate um you know, donate stuff for prizes. I think the reason for that is, well, you know, obviously all of these businesses is a form of advertisement. And I think that it's just because now it's really broken out um, in the community as actually being like an event. You know, like it was an event before that people knew about. But do you know what I mean? It was only yeah. amongst a certain segment of the population. Exactly. And this, this now it's, now it's become, yeah, now it's become like part of the general population's, you know, knowledge. Exactly. And uh, I think because of that, I think that's why so many sponsors stepped up to the plate. And that's where it's really, uh, that's where I feel that this improvement has been this year. As well as hopefully, uh, I hope that we uh, break the numbers of last year's. Um, last year we estimated how many in attendance, Steve? I think it was uh, probably in between two and 250, I would imagine. I think we stopped counting at 200. Wow, that's a lot. That's and that's that's like a tremendous accomplishment for for two local guys, two local boys, uh, kind of just doing this up on a whim, and it's turned into its whole new a whole new thing, you know. I think why it's turned into the whole new thing is 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 the fact that starting with the second one, having so many uh, young people and kids involved, this was the same thing we've seen repeated uh, in year three as well. I've been to other zombie walks, you know, um, like I've seen the ones in Toronto, I've seen other ones done here in the region. Um, I've seen some while I was living out west for a few years, so I'd seen some out west. And even when you look at videos of zombie walks, a lot of what you're seeing is like kids and youth. It's almost like they're the accessory. Do you know what I mean? It's mostly geared towards adults. You might see some teens, some youth, but not really a sizable right. number of them. Whereas consistently, we I'd, I'd say about half. Every time that we've, like, other than the first one, every, like, the last two zombie walks, I would easily say half was, was, was under the age of 18. Like, we're seeing entire families dress up in a theme. So I, like, I'd say probably about 80% of our attendance was there with their family last year. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was a great family environment. Well, wow. so I guess the next question then, uh, or the, the obvious question is, where do we go from here? Like, we know... We, we, we know it's on tap this year for, for uh, season four. I'm going to just keep calling it season <laughs> uh, But for year four here, we, we, we kind of have an idea of what's on tap and what to expect. Of course, we're hoping everything's going to exceed expectations. But where do you guys build from from here? What, what, what's, what's the next natural progression? What's the, what's the evolution of the Welland zombie walk? Does it become a Niagara zombie walk? Does it stay rooted in Welland? What, what are your plans? I think uh, in order for this walk to succeed next year in Welland, uh, the help of our volunteers is going to be key. Uh, we definitely need volunteers to keep this, this event going. Uh, I mean, me and James started it, and uh, definitely it's not a huge event to run so far. It hasn't got that quite out of hand, but uh, like you said, if, uh, if numbers grow again this year, then uh, we're, we're definitely going to need some help next year. Well, exactly. So if somebody wanted to come out uh, and help volunteer, what do they do? Where do they go? Who do they look up? Uh, who do they get in contact with? With me? I guess they're getting in contact with me. <laughs> we, we usually direct uh, everything towards uh, our, our, our Facebook group, Well in Zombie Walk. Um, otherwise, if people want to contact me directly, they can do so uh, through email. Um, uh, that's deadpopstar70, so D-E-A-D-P-O-P-S-T-A-R-7-0. <laughs> at gmail.com just send me a message and uh, i'll you know try to accommodate you as best as i can if i can add something to what steve said as well um about what is the next natural progression now again this is just my wish i guess he's saying i know what i would like to see next year for 
number five, season five. I would love to see the downtown business community of Welland step in and uh, help us out. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know if I should just come out and ask them. You know what? It sure would be nice if you guys got together with the city of Welland and supported such a great family event and closed the bridge for an hour. Well, well, we're calling that's you all that, that, That's right. We're talking about. <laughs> that's big talk talking about closing down a bridge. There, they'd never do that. Well, especially especially <laughs> after that guy talked about that, right? So, so all right. So, so uh, it looks like things are going to be progressing greatly uh, in the future. Um, the Well and Zombie Walk just going to keep growing and growing and growing, and I, I think it is only a matter of time. And I, and I think you've actually seen a bit of that. Uh, downtown business core getting into it with uh, at least some of the sponsors and stuff and you're gonna I, I could actually even see it if it keeps growing you know you guys branching off and maybe you know into other cities you know maybe St. Catharines, the Niagara Falls, the Niagara region sort of thing if that's is that even something you guys are thinking about or on the plate or, or have you ever thought about joining in with anybody else uh, I know there is at least one other zombie walk in the region that uh, that we do know about, and uh, as far as uh, ours, like I said, uh, I think what separates ours from the not only just the ones in the region, but the ones in the bigger city is ours is very family orientated. You know, it's uh, we encourage people to come up with their kids, and if you don't even want to dress up as a zombie, just come in costume. Like like James was saying earlier, with the whole black and orange day now at school, you know, it's. Yeah, parents go out and they spend all this money on Halloween costumes and the kids, they don't even get to wear them to school anymore, you know. So it gives kids another excuse to just come out, dress up, have some fun, have a chance to win some great prizes. Uh, over $1,000 in prizes this year. Uh, wow. Four categories, first first through third for each category. So oh, it's, uh, it, it's going to be it's gonna be huge. And uh, do you want to give us a little bit of a rundown on those, uh, some of the categories you guys are going to yeah, be running? Yeah, we have uh, our big uh, grand prizes are... Uh, Best Family and Group uh, category. Um, then we have Best Teen, Best Adult, and Best Child, which is uh, 12 and under. Nice. So things are looking pretty good for everybody coming up this weekend. Definitely, definitely. Now, with the Well and Zombie Walk and with all these sponsors out there, um, it, it's just more and more people coming every year. What is the reaction, though, that you guys are getting from, like, the families, like, the kids? Like, what do, what do they think of the time out there? You know, because you're getting some youngsters, and maybe you can give us a, a little bit on some of the ages you're seeing out there and how they're responding to it. I'm pretty sure our best uh, best kid costume uh, in year two, I, he couldn't have been more than two years old. Was that year two or year three? Remember when we held up the kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was, yeah. He, was, he was just adorable. Yeah, that was, that was year two. Yeah, yeah, it was. So it's, it's great to see the little ones out there for sure. Well, that's uh, pretty awesome. Well, we are going to go and take our first break because, you know, we're at that time. You know, we got to pay the bills, as they say. <laughs> so I just want to remind everybody, uh, we're sitting here, we're talking with Steve Lambert and James Takeo, the co-founders of the Welland Zombie Walk fourth annual this year it's going to be bigger than it ever has been before uh, we're going to get back uh, we have some questions from some of our fans of the page we got some questions from uh, the zombie walk page as well and uh, we're going to field some of those and then uh, the second half of the show we're going to get into some walking dead time so once again you're listening to ryan's all things geek rat g right here on 103.7 fm brock university radio here on cfbu or listen online on cfbu.ca I just want to say one thing, you guys haven't mentioned the date yet. I know it's this week, but... <laughs> well, now we'll just keep mentioning it. We'll it. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Well, hanging out on a couple of those questions there. No, man, not a problem. I think fast on my feet, so you can <clears throat> Just in time. Holy crap, that was close. You guys ready? Mm -hmm. Find any questions yet? <clears throat> no, I just uh, throw the date out there if you want when we come back. <laughs> 
All right, welcome back to Rat G, Ryan's All Things Geek, right here on 103.7 FM, Brock University Radio. Or you can be listening to us live online at cfbu.ca. Uh, for those of you out there in uh, Facebook land and radio land, if you will, do want to follow our page, you can look us up on Facebook at Ryan's All Things Geek. And that's for all your latest news on all things geek and pop culture. Uh, one of those things that uh, is in the world of pop culture, of course, is, and it's huge, and it, ever, and it really has been forever, but never so much so since The Walking Dead, and that's zombies. And today we have with us the co-founders of the Will and Zombie Walk, Steve Lambert, James DeCaio. Thanks Hi. for coming back, guys. Hi. <laughs> so, guys, uh, before we got to the break, we were just talking about, you know, the family aspect of the Will and Zombie Walk. Um, and like you said, that is something that does make you guys unique to all the different zombie walks that are around the region, at least. Even when you look at the Toronto zombie walk, you don't really see the family atmosphere out there. And uh, I don't know, was that, was that something you guys consciously decided to do ahead of time? Was it something you even thought about? Or just like you, kind of you said, James, that before, it was just kind of one of those things that just kind of came up and you're like, yeah, it's the natural answer. I think that that's really probably the best response. It was a natural answer. Did I think about it beforehand? Honestly, no. Would I have thought about it? It's hard to say. I would like to say that I think I would. But you know what? It, it just got inspired by somebody simply asking if they could bring their kids. And you know what? Why not? Right. Hey. And, uh, Steve, do you, uh, your kids come out too as well? Uh, my kids came out, uh, last year was their first year. Uh, our oldest was uh, a little resistant, but, uh, by the time she got there, I think she was having fun. No, it was a rallying success with her then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we keep talking about the natural progression of things on, where do we go from here? You know, what's, what's the next step for the well and zombie walk? Is there an end game? Is, is this just ride it out until it dies out? Are you guys riding the zombie wave as long as that goes? Or or is this something that, you know, you're hoping becomes something new in the area that's going to be a mainstay for, you know, 20, 40 years from now? Or is that thinking too far ahead? You know, if I can respond to that, I think uh, with all the other things I'm involved in, which I'm not going to mention here, but all the other things I'm involved in that you're well aware of, uh, the attitude has always been, you know what, we got to build from the ground up. That way the ceiling is unlimited. So is there an end game? That's your answer. Nice. Very stoic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even really sure what that word means, but it sounded very fitting for right there. <laughs> it certainly did. It actually was. Well, thank you very much. I'm not would just I, a would I like face. to see it grow? Yeah, I definitely would like to see it grow and get bigger every year and become a, a you know, a community event. Uh, my one concern, I guess, would be that uh, zombies have always been one of those kind of things that they come up every once every few decades, and they have a good run for you know five, right. ten years, and then and then they kind of disappear for a bit. Like you know, it started in the in the fifties, and then they kind of came back big with uh, the movies of the seventies. The George Romero's and and then uh, God bless it. I love it. It's a great film, but uh, I think Return of the Living Dead kind of made the zombie genre a bit of a bit of a joke. Right in the mid to late eighties. Now, how, how, how so? Because I, I hear a lot of uh, hardcore zombie fans say the same thing. I, I mean, I, I love Return, Return of the Living Dead is a great film. It, it's it's comedic, you know. It, it kind of had a different take on it. Uh, it wasn't political like the movies of the 70s were, but uh, all in all, it was a uh, great hour and 29 minutes, for sure. Awesome. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, you're on we, the radio, you've already kind of been quoted, so... And well, you can send all of your uh, hate mail to Steve Lambert, care of. <laughs> we get that every week with somebody. <laughs> so, um, so this week we uh, do have a few questions for you guys. Um, I'm going to put out the first one here. It's from... Uh, a regular from my page and a, a friend of mine as well, uh, Johnny Knapp, uh, and he has a couple questions for you, and this is just for the zombie crowds out there, okay? For the zombie organizers, do you have a favorite cinematic zombie from either The Walking Dead and other past zombie movies? Uh, his favorite zombie from a movie is Jack Griffin Dunn in American Werewolf in London. Anybody else have a favorite zombie? Not a zombie movie, but an actual zombie character. A specific zombie character? For me, I'm always a fan of kid zombies, man, because there ain't nothing creepier than that. So so which uh, which which one did you see the kid zombie in? 
almost any time you see a kid zombie. <laughs> the Dirt, Walking Dead when the uh, Sarah came. Was like, oh, what was her name? Uh, oh, um, you're thinking of uh, the bar in Sophia. Sophia, when Sophia, Sophia yeah. came out, yeah. <laughs> Carol thought. Even, uh, I'm pretty sure the, the first zombie Rick encounters is a little girl in a house coat, I believe, amongst us. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. On the grass there. Yeah. The, that scene that everybody always remembers. Or and that was right, right out of the strip, right from the comic books, that, right, that right. scene at least. And even if you go back to, to Romero's Night of the Living Dead, Think of in the basement, the kid in the basement, and they're mm-hmm. becoming a zombie too, right? And what's that famous image that always goes with that movie is that same kid. Well, that just puts it out there. And most parents already know this. Kids are creepy. I'm <laughs> 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 just going to put that out there for everybody because we all know that. Look at The Shining, the, the, the twin girls, you know. Look at the kid in The Omen. It just Kids are creepy. Kids. And kids are never, ever creepier than when they're your own. <laughs> <laughs> so uh johnny does have a a kind of follow-up here and i don't know if this is more walking dead related or what um maybe a little walking dead science related um i'm gonna put it out there for you guys and just uh once i'm done reading it feel free to have it her. <laughs> okay so uh johnny says in regards to the zombie poop issue why do zombies eat flesh where does the flesh go if they have no working digestive system? If zombies didn't eat people, they really wouldn't be such a problem. They'd just be a nuisance. Kind of like stuck in traffic, heard a zombie, his head plowed up the tunnel again. <laughs> Took 20 minutes to get a coffee this morning. A zombie in front of me had to, had to count his change. So, <laughs> which I kind of found pretty funny. Anyways, but he does uh, bring up a... a Where great... does zombie poop go? Yeah. This seems like one of those timeless, answerless <laughs> questions. Much like... Why, like, like, how is it that lightsabers only know to go so far? <laughs> well, if you watch the special with Dr. Michio Kaku, <laughs> the article physicist, he actually explains it's impossible to stop that without a little end. I know, I didn't end that as funny as it started off, but <laughs> <laughs> the truth is never funny. I, I did not know that. No. Well, now you do, and uh, knowing is half the battle, and that's what I'm here for. So. That, that, that being said, do we really want to know where the zombie poop goes? No, but I, I, this, this, sh- this, question, this show though, like, don't is all me. about the fans, and we are here, if nothing, to help the fans out with their questions and their dilemmas and their, you know, pop culture viewing. I that. think, uh, I think most zombies are, uh, you know, at, at most stages, uh, rotting corpses. So, you, like you said, with the non-working digestive system, I think most of it would probably not even make it as far as the digestive system. They're just kind of like fall right out Leak from out whatever hole out. is on the way from their mouth to their And, and also, their uh, the zombie that ate uh, Rick's wife in the prison after she gave birth, he was uh, he was quite plump afterwards. So I don't think it really went anywhere. He, he, he really expanded. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> that, that was the fat Albert of zombies. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to take a quick, quick 30-second uh, break here just to remind everybody you are listening to 103.7 FM. CFBU Brock University Radio right here in St. Catharines, Ontario, or you're listening online at cfbu.ca, and this is the Rat G, Ryan All Things Geek Show. I'm sitting here with uh, Stephen Lambert and James Takeo, the co-founders of the Well and Zombie Walk, heading into year four. Um, one thing we are going to be getting into the second half of the show here, we're going to be talking a little bit more about uh, The Walking Dead, because these are our zombie experts. So we will be uh, wrapping a little bit with that. Uh, We do have our co-host Shannon McFarland Sawchuck here as well. So don't you fret there, uh, you fanboys out there. She is here. (laughs) She is keeping six on us. Uh, And then when we get into uh, the Walking Dead conversation here, uh, you will get to hear from the one and the only Miss Shannon McFarland Sawchuck. So yes, thank you for listening again. (laughs) So uh, gentlemen, um, I'm going to put this uh, actually out to Steve first because... um, I know James does watch The Walking Dead as well. He's not quite up to date as uh, as the rest of us are. And I know Steve is a diehard Walking Dead television and comic book fan as well. So Steve, uh, give me right off the bat. First thing I gotta know: what's better, comic or the TV show? Uh, I would have to say graphic novel. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the TV show is great. I, I love the TV show. I was never much of a comic book guy. Mm-hmm. I got really until The Walking Dead started. And, right. uh, I think 
the comics. That's why you, you call it a graphic novel. Only non-comic book fans call the big graphic <laughs> novels graphic novels because they're just really one big comic book all put together. But anyways, yeah. It's, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the, there's definitely a lot more drama, I think, in the comic book as well as uh, it's definitely a lot more graphic. I mean, I, I just started letting my kids watch The Walking Dead this year and uh, my youngest, 10 years old, he first question out of his mouth when he finished season four was, when do I get to read the books? Oh, wow. And to my dismay, you know, <laughs> uh, you know yeah. a few years from now. Yeah, sorry, not quite yet because the uh, books are way more intense. Yeah, than definitely a lot more brutal, that's for sure. Yeah, which is, uh, I think, is one of the appeals of the book. Um, and maybe one of the drawbacks from the show could be that as well because they can't go as far as they do in the comic books with certain things. I, um, I think the great thing about the show, though, is... They've been able to change storylines slightly to, you know, not really reveal uh, spoilers to the comic book reader who's right. already, you know, a year ahead of the story. Oh, exactly. Uh, great, great spins on, on the show. Unlike Game of Thrones, where if you've read the books, you know what's going I, to I've happen. Game of Thrones in, is very accurate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you do know what's going to happen in the, in the TV show if you've read the books. As for The Walking Dead, trade paperback, graphic novel, comic book, <laughs> the, the written form, uh, there is so much in there that, or so much that's on the TV show that isn't on the, in the written word or in the comic books themselves, like Daryl is not a part of the comic books, that's right. something just made up. Um, What's her name? Didn't die. Um, uh, Andrea's still alive. Andrea's still alive. She, she, she's still a very key character. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so, and I well, I don't want to give away too many spoilers because there's been a lot of big spoilers lately in the comic book. So, we're gonna save those for maybe the page if you're looking for them. Um, no, but what when, when we're looking at the show though, Steve, um, for a fan like yourself of both genres, what do you like when you see a crossover, and what don't you like when you see a crossover? Has there been something where it's come over from the book and you're like, oh, that's fantastic! I'm so happy they did that. And has there been another time when someone's come over from the comic books and like, oh man, they really blew that, or that shouldn't have been there? Uh, I, I, at first thought, I, I guess I would have to say Shane's role in the TV show uh, extended what two, two plus seasons? Yeah, two seasons. Yeah, which was a lot longer. Yeah, and than the I, books. I'm pretty sure he was gone like after the third book. The third book, yeah. yeah. So his, his storyline being extended, he kind of created that uh, villain within the. The group. The, the good guys, you know, almost. So that, that definitely uh, created some different obstacles. Was that a good thing for you? Do you think I, I, I handled that well? I, I enjoyed it, yeah. yeah. I definitely enjoyed Shane, Shane's role. And not, not to mention uh, the actor. I yeah, John Berthenau. Yeah, great, great, great actor. actor. And you know what? For my choice right now for when Hugh Jackman steps, steps down as Wolverine is John Berthenau to play Wolverine. Yeah. He's got the size. He's got the look. You know, he's not I pretty boy. I can see he's, that. he's just a plain up tough guy. But yeah. So, um, what about things that have failed? Things that have failed? Uh, you know what? That's, uh, that, that's a tough question for me because uh, I'm just such a big fan of the show. Well, I, both, I, right? I, I know people, a lot of people uh, that I talked to that were fans of the show kind of trailed off last year. Right. And, and they did break off and do the whole separate episode thing and they kind of concentrated more on uh, building the characters. And I, think, and I think what it did was it got you involved. It got you more invested right. in the characters individually, which I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And some people, they, no, want, I, they want violence every, every yeah, week. Yeah, and I heard that a lot on the page too, was a lot of people did complain because the first, that first week, or, or the first half, I should say, like you said, every episode was focused on two characters. And then it was just their story trying to meet up with the rest of the group, you know, and whatever they had overcome. It was very character driven. I like you. I really like that. I think maybe, though, if if I could have changed it at all, I maybe would have did an amalgam of both, though. Maybe did some character driven stuff with some action. Because it seemed at the end of the season, it was just all action. At the beginning of the season, it was all, you know, character building. If you could have seen them mesh the two throughout the entire season, would have worked for me, but you know what? I still really liked it. Um, the reason why I did ask you about the things that uh, didn't work for you, one thing that I do hear from a lot of fans uh, that they don't like from the book to TV is they don't like the way Miss Chone is. Because I guess she's not anything like she is in the book. And I haven't quite made it that far into the book, so I don't really know too much about her. 
she's, the book she's wise. definitely softened a little bit in the comic books and, and more recently than anything. Right. Uh, to, I, I, to be more like the TV show, you think? To, to more like her TV show character mm -hmm. now. Yeah, she definitely uh, made that transition a lot quicker within the TV show. And I, I think that was a necessary move as mm -hmm. far as uh, her likability. So do you, was she more likable on the TV show or on the comic book when they both first came out? For me, I, I definitely liked her more on the TV show. Oh, nice. That's good to hear. Yeah, because like I said, uh, when it comes to hardcore fans of anything, you change something a little bit, and the fans and the fanboys and fangirls are gonna lose their mind. Um, I'm not gonna say anything about me and Johnny Storm and the Fantastic Four. <coughs> so wrong. I, I'd say probably <laughs> the biggest character as far as that is uh, Andrea. I mean, Andrea is is she she's a badass in the comic yeah. and still around, and I really like her character. And yeah. they could not have been polar opposites. I think that the way they were portrayed in the TV show. Exactly, and a lot of people didn't like her character on the TV show, and I actually liked her character on the show. I didn't mind her at all. I thought she was doing what she needed to do to survive, um, and she seemed almost like the most relatable character on the show. You know, like. Okay, well, you know, you you come to these crossroad decisions throughout your life, and you're gonna make some good decisions, you're gonna make some bad decisions, but you're always, you know, always striving for the best sort of thing. And she seemed like that type of person, yeah. at least to me. So, but yeah, it's a it's a pretty crazy thing, I must say. Um, so, what do you, what have you been thinking of the season so far? Ah, uh, first episode was definitely. Uh, I I don't think anyone could have asked for more on that first episode. That was. Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, the whole Terminus, you know, uh, being a fan of the graphic novel, there was talk of, you know, Terminus being the cannibals, and we weren't really, we weren't quite sure. And uh, in the comic book, they're they're not organized. They're, no. they're basically, uh, they're referred to as the hunters in uh, in the comic, and uh, they're, they're kind of drifters. Mm -hmm. So well, that's, that's funny that you say that, because the end of the last episode, uh, sorry, there's going to be some spoiler alerts here, folks, so... <laughs> Listen, anyways. <laughs> um, but at the end of the first episode, uh, or the last episode, I should say, um, Bob is taken by them, and some of the survivors from Terminus, and he even calls himself War Hunters. He, he, says he, does, he does say the line. He's yeah, like, you yeah. make us hunters again. Yeah. So. And Bob, uh, for fans of the graphic novel, is assuming Dale's role oh comic. really that that's uh yeah dale was that's bitten. why he's missing in la dale was bitten in an attack and in the middle of the night decided that he was just gonna wander off into the woods and uh save himself you know and uh the group some, some grief and uh he ends up getting abducted by the hunters mm -hmm. See, uh, no, that's the only thing with the show they didn't really show that he'd actually been bit but i figured that the way he was sobbing and everything like mm -hmm. that but it's uh, it's good to have a little confirmation. I mean, it, it, it's right out of the pages. I mean, he wakes up conscious, uh, missing, and, the and missing the leg, and uh, in the in the comic, at least, uh, Dale just starts laughing. You know, like you guys are eating my infected meat. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Gotta love it. Well, we're gonna get back into some more uh, Walking Dead talk once we get back from uh, the break here. Um, we're gonna have uh, the co-host who's been sitting by patiently waiting to get in on some of this Walking Dead talk as well. Uh, join us for the second half. Just a reminder to everybody, you are listening to Ratchy right here on 103.7 FM, Brock University Radio, right here in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Or you can be listening live online anywhere around the world at cfbu.ca. And uh, we will be right back with you folks. Ciao for now. I actually so seen a picture online last night, and uh, they were showing the leader of the Hunters next to a picture of the Gar uh, is it Gareth? Gareth from the TV yeah. show. They even have the same jacket. Oh, no. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and it was Chris. I believe it was Chris in the, in the comic books yeah. as the leader of the Hunters. So. Yeah, and that's that guy, right? That's yeah, man. yeah. I'm just doing the same commercials over and over again. On... What do you guys want to hit? We got 17 seconds. What else do you want to hit on there? What do you want to talk about? Anything from the show? What, what's his name? Is back though the black guy? That was yeah. Oh, uh, Morgan. Morgan. Yeah. Okay, we're back in five. All right, welcome back to Rad G Ryan's All Things Geek right here on 103.7 FM, Brock University Radio right here in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Uh, are you listening online anywhere around the world at cfbu.ca? I'm sitting here this week 
with the co-founders of the Well and Zombie Walk, Steve Lambert and James Takeo. We also have in studio this week, even though you haven't heard from her yet, the one, the only, Shannon McFarland Sawchuck. Hello. Hello, Shannon. Hello. And how are you doing this week? I'm awesome. Awesome. So we're doing some uh, Walking Dead talk. I hear you like The Walking Dead. Just just a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of the first thing you notice when I walk in my room. I've got uh, two posters signed by uh, two of the two different uh, comic book artists from the original comics. Nice. So. Some Kirkman art. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, and I hear you've been making some guts lately. I have. Yeah, I'm getting ready for the Well and Zombie Walk. Awesome. So defend my title. Yeah, you're looking to defend your title. Uh, that's going to be pretty exciting for you. Is this your first title defense of anything? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, just try not to be like a Rocky Balboa when you win it against uh, <laughs> Clubber Lang that first time out. Yes, but for our younger audience out there, that was a Sylvester Stallone reference. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, let's get back into The Walking Dead because this season so far, a lot of people are allowing this as being the greatest season of The Walking Dead so far. And we're only, what, two episodes in. So... Let's talk about what we've liked so far about this season of The Walking Dead. Because I do have some things I'd like to talk about that I didn't like. <laughs> but uh, let's, let's get into that Which first. Which I can't wait to hear. Oh, well, it's, it's <laughs> mostly all just from the first week. And I'm sure everybody's already heard it already or discussed it on their own. Um, but I'd like to get from you, at least Shannon, why don't you give me, what's your feedback from this first season so far? What have you liked so far from this season? I was going to say uh, right off the bat, go Carol. <laughs> yeah, go Carol Rambo. That and um, I think my favorite moment so far was uh, when Carol and, and Daryl were reunited. That hug was like for mm. like three minutes at least. Reunited and it feels <laughs> so good. <laughs> yes, that was Ryan and Steve. <laughs> Rocked back to the years. Yes. <laughs> um, and so, what else did you get from that? What, what, what else was your big love from the first couple episodes? Anything? Uh, I can't wait to see what's happening next. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't blame you either. Me too. Uh, you know what? This this season has been pretty fantastic so far. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Um, before I get into uh, my disses, though, for it, I, I'd like to hear uh, from my resident uh, zombie guru, Steve, here, uh, on what your wins are so far. Well, just to touch on the Carol thing that uh, Shannon had mentioned, uh, you know, uh, covering herself in zombie guts, which they had, which they had done in the first season when right. they were, when they were in Atlanta. Right. And, I mean, she was walking among such a huge, huge horde in Determinus. Why are they just not doing this all the time? Yeah, that was my <laughs> question, too. Why don't they do this every single day? I was go, to you, why don't they just do it all the time? They're like, uh, we got to go into town to get some supplies. Well, let's send out uh, Carl and Who, Ray. Who's the cleanest? Nothing. Yeah, who's the cleanest? <laughs> Did anybody just take a shower? You're up. <laughs> but, okay, so yeah, so what? A, that that's obviously a bit of a diss, then. <laughs> do you have any other diss for this season? Uh... No, you know what? I've been I've been pretty happy, especially like uh, with this the last episode last night. Just like right, like I said, right out of the pages. I mean, even the return of Morgan, right, uh, coincides with the graphic novels. And that that is so huge. And Morgan is such a a fan favorite. Now I I don't know much about Morgan from the books because he was in the very first story arc, yeah. him and his son. But his son died, I think, in that first story arc, right? He doesn't die in the first story arc. He actually uh, we learn of his death. Uh, when Rick encounters him later on, and uh, you end end up learning that uh, I, I think when he returns with the story that's happening now in the TV show, that he actually uh, he actually kept his son alive for a while as a zombie, oh, right. and was feeding him uh, attackers all basically. Uh, all, uh, the governor, yeah, the governor is so, his daughter. Uh, sort of Morgan thing. is uh, definitely uh, not uh, no. not the right state of mind right now. <laughs> No, he's not. And you could, and he knew that from his last encounter with Rick when uh, when they met up with him in the city, and we found out that Morgan was still alive. Um, okay, so so that's good. No, so you've got no no really qualms in with the season at all. You're all right. The season is perfect. What about? <laughs> <laughs> I like that they've jumped right into the action. Oh yeah. Like it yeah. hasn't even that too. A lot of time hadn't even passed like they've done with previous seasons. Like it's been a couple months or something. They jumped right back to where they were. Right, so. which is awesome. And I think that's good. That's one thing they had to do for the fans from last season because so many fans were upset about 
you know, there not being enough action, you know, there being too much character-driven storyline. I think they had no choice but to come out right away out of the gates action, you know. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, balls to the walls and just kind of go from there. Um, yeah, it's 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 been a great season. And, um, and we finally get introduced to uh, Father Gabriel as well. Yeah, uh, Father big, Gabriel. Big, big character from the comics. And he's a, a bit of a crazy character because, like I said, I'm not quite up to date yet. So I did a little on Wikipedia on him last night. And he's still around in the comic yeah, books he is, right now. He is still around. So he is a survivor. Not necessarily he, it's going to be the way it's going to be in the TV show. That, right. that all depends on the writers. But he seems to be, from what I read... A bit of a moral balance, but also he's got some serious, serious demons in his closet that night at the church, uh, for instance. I think we're going to, and I don't want to spoil it too much, but some bad stuff happened. Well, there was a scene last night where uh, Rick, Rick returns to the church and Carl's standing outside and he notices the gouge marks outside the windows. Right. And, and they don't people look trying like to get in. People trying to get in. And then there was, uh, I believe it was Y'all Burn for this, scroll yes. up into the side of the building. Right. So... And, yeah, because the way I'm, I'm interpreting it, or I'm looking at it at least, is Father Gabriel locked everybody out and just fended for yeah. himself until everybody was dead. He, he, had, he had a big smorgasbord. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yeah. Food donations. This is my food. <laughs> so, <laughs> my precious. <laughs> Which is not what we do with our food donations from the zombie world. <laughs> just to throw that out there. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that because we were not sure. <laughs> we're actually just preparing for the zompocalypse. <laughs> we we are the actual future Father Gabriels. <laughs> so don't come to our church, no. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, this season I'm gonna say, like you guys said, has been very good, and it's probably since the first season the best season so far. We're only two episodes in, so I don't want to get way too far ahead of ourselves, like. Uh, we fanboys seem to do at times. That's just what we do and who we are. Um, problems that I did have with that first episode, though, or with the uh, the Carol episode, where she went all Rambo. Oh, great scene and everything, but okay. I know she's a good shot, so I had no problem with her taking out that first century that was out there that was guarding, guarding the Terminus, you know, a headshot, no problem. My problem, though, was with her other rifle, she just leans up anywhere, just randomly against the fence, puts a bottle rocket in it, doesn't take any time to aim it at all, and then she takes her sniper rifle, aims at a fuel tank, shoots that, enough gas comes out of it, she fires off the rocket without moving it at all from that same trajectory, perfect dead-on shot. I think the general idea there was, though, I mean, it's his gas, so it's leaking into the air, I guess. Just got to get her well, close, right? Right, but she still got it right in the middle. She, and she, she that's did. A, she did. Still a heck of a shot for, you know, not aiming it up at all. <laughs> okay, so I can maybe get past that, but not really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then that brings us to mysterious soon-to-be zombie child guy that's lying on the ground when all these zombies are coming through at Terminus. And there's a zombie roughly a football field away from him. <laughs> and the guy is on his back. Nothing wrong with him. He's not injured at all. He's like, oh, my God, too. oh, my God, oh, my God. I'm like, why and, is he crawling? And I'm like, like get oh, off even, your butt. Even if you can't get off your butt, just roll over to your belly. Stand, stand up, crawl, and run away in the opposite direction. They're walkers. They're not They're not fast. They're walkers. Curs. Yes, they this, walk isn't World, this isn't World War Z we're dealing with. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, World War Z, God. you got some problems. All the fat people are dead. I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I am a goner. That's just the way it is. I'm sorry. All I, you have I'm, to do is outrun Ryan. That's it. You don't have to be faster than the zombies, just faster than me. <laughs> but yeah, it's, so I had a problem with that because, you know, that thing's, you know, yeah. 50 feet away, whatever. And he's like, oh my God, oh my God. And it cuts away and then it turns back and the zombie's on top of him, eating his face. Like, come on, man. <laughs> Please. Epic this stuff. Yeah, fail. that was a definite epic fail. And that was one one problem, a couple problems I had with this season. But they are kind of minute. Well, they're actually kind of big problems. But, you know, there's only a couple of them. So I can get past it and still say this has been a fantastic season. Um, Steve, i got to ask you, though. How much... How much uh, influence did The Walking Dead have in with the actual zombie walk itself? I, I think just the sheer uh, 
popularity of the TV show is what brought zombie walks into the, the limelight. I mean, I, I guess you'd say the Toronto one probably did start a year or two before the success of the TV show, but right. the comic books have been around for, I'm, I'm not even sure now, because I was a little late to the game actually getting the comic books, but yeah, uh, me, me it, too. at least eight years, I would say. Yeah, it would seem, it's, it's been a long time. Yeah. It's, Probably the early 2000s, even. I, uh, I I didn't get them until just two years ago, and I bought the first seven hardcovers and went through them in two months. So. Wow. <laughs> now I wait for, for a month to get five minutes of satisfaction. Now i got to get you the newest Batman. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm up to three comic books now, all Robert Kirkman's. But uh, all right, so what do you what do you got? What's uh, what's your Robert Kirkman fix? I, I'm reading um, Thief of Thieves, which is actually in development with AMC for a right. TV show, yeah, so, and his newest one, Outcast, which is yeah. actually really good. That's getting a lot of big reviews too, like which has also been community. picked up by AMC. Yeah, well, they might as well just call that the Robert Kirkman Network. Exactly, <laughs> let's call it RKC, <laughs> <laughs> Robert Kirkman Channel. But yeah, no, uh, he's. He's got a pretty twisted mind, but it's it's a good twisted. Yeah. You know, it, it, there's a lot of like. Don't get me wrong. I like Rob Zombie, um, and I like a, a lot of his movies. But a, but a lot of Rob Zombie's movies, as uh, Steve shows me off his Rob Zombie T-shirt he's wearing in here. <laughs> um, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> but you you do notice though in a lot of his movies, at least in the earlier ones. It's more shock than it is story. Yeah. Later in his career, you know, you're starting to see the the story going with the shock. I haven't seen his latest one, but yeah, you're, you're definitely right. He's got one right. coming out in a couple of days, doesn't he? Uh, I'm not sure. 13 or 31. Or 31. Or that yeah. one's actually in pre-production. It's actually being okay. fan-funded, that, oh, that wow. movie, yeah. But uh, his Got latest one, uh, Lords of Salem, I think was his last one, which I haven't seen yet. It's the only one I haven't seen. But yeah, and that was uh, the witch movie, which was, yeah, right up there, which uh, James has given us the thumb up with and <laughs> I give it two thumbs up <laughs> so uh yeah well uh Kirkman's Kirkman's just one of those guys that just he knows how to marry the two though marry the horror with the storytelling which you don't normally get like I said unfortunately with you know a Rob Zombie um even even a lot of, even like I'm sorry but as much as he is the godfather of all even George Romero is just all shock and awe as great as the and as viewing wise, especially back then, because it was stuff we'd never seen. But Kirkman seems to take all that and then add in the human element because in, in on the show, honestly, and I don't know about the the two new comic books, but in the show and in the Walking Dead comic, your threats aren't the walkers; it's the other it's, people. It's the living. Yeah, the living are the ones that you have to worry about more than the Walking Dead. It's the Walking Living, mm -hmm. which. Could be his next book. <laughs> <laughs> the Walking Walking. The Walking Walking. Well, I don't know. That just might be a Lord of the Rings movie. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all week. Don't forget to tip your server and try the meal. <laughs> but no, seriously. There's a lot of walking in those movies. <laughs> but no, I, uh, I'm i looking forward to see where they go from here. Um, quickly, we've just got about five minutes to go here. Uh, quickly, I'm going to go to you, Steve, and then to you, uh, Shannon. What are we looking forward to this season? What's what's piqued your what's piqued your interest, and what has to happen, in your opinion, in this season for it to be a successful season to keep to keep building on the momentum they have so far? I'm going to start with you, Steve. All right. Well, uh, without giving away too much here, being a fan of the graphic novels, uh, I do know where they're headed. Obviously, well, we know it's DC, but right. uh, there is an area that they they do end up. Uh, settling in near DC for uh, quite some time in the graphic novels and uh, that's that, that's exciting as well as the uh, the hopes that we might see Negan by the end of the year yeah and they've cast that already right I'm not sure if they've cast it but I've heard the rumors of Kevin Durant yeah me being too cast as a great actor too yeah. from great uh, Canadian actor yeah. from X-Men Origins yeah, he's from Thunder out. Bay yeah uh, he was in uh, the first role I ever seen him in was one of my favorite movies of all time Mystery Watch Alaska Okay, Mystery Alaska, that's right, Walk, walking, walking Tall. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was in Walking Tall as well. That was yeah, after he was, Mr. Uh, Alaska. He was Gabriel and Legion. Yeah, and he was in, uh, the, he was Little John in Robin Hood with Russell Crowe again. That's right, that's right. Too. Yeah, so he's got that Russell Crowe connection already. <laughs> and that's uh, actually two guys from Mystery Alaska, the redhead guy as well. Um, uh, Abraham? I, I don't know his name. He's a Canadian actor as well. He's on uh, Republic of Doyle every oh, once in a while. Okay. But uh, he's a, he was a child actor out of Canada, and he's in a lot of Russell Crowe movies as well. So now no, that we're getting off on a tangent there. <laughs> Six degrees of Russell Crowe. That's right, brother. It's better than uh, Kevin Bacon and Keanu Reeves. Uh, 
So, uh, so yeah, so it is heading in the right direction, though, for you. Yeah, definitely. You're seeing. definitely. Awesome. What about you, Shannon? Is it is this going the right way for you? I, I, I'm pretty happy. Like, you know, we've been talking since, you know, like, oh, for months now about it. And, like, oh, can't we? But, yeah, um, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, what I'm waiting to see, um, what's, is it Beth? Yes, they yes. saw the car. They exactly. saw the car again. I'm like, no, a little bit more. Come on. <laughs> and see, that's got to be what's a little bit exciting for someone like Steve, where you've got this story that's not in the book. Like Beth, Beth, where, Beth where was dead going? long before they even encountered the farm. Like uh, Herschel had uh, quite a few kids. I think it was yeah. five or six kids, and most of them were, were gone before we even get introduced to that whole family. Yeah. So I was surprised she lasted this long on the show. Actually, to tell yeah. you the truth, but I, I'm kind of glad she is. I, I like the actress who portrays her. I'm glad they've given her more lines over the last couple of seasons and we've got to see her grow as an actual actress because that's something you don't see very often and uh, especially shows like this. It's, we'll just get you in there for your pretty time and then kill you off and go from there. But uh, All right, so the uh, show's been great. We're down the last two minutes and uh, just want to give this last couple of seconds to you, uh, there, Steve. If you want to just give everybody a rundown on what's going on with the Well and Zombie Walk, what day it is, where everyone can meet, where they can drop off donations if they want. And uh, just give this guy a listen, guys, and this is a great cause. All right, well, it's, uh, it's this Sunday, October 26th, uh, 6.30, uh, bus terminal at uh, Main and Dorothy in downtown Welland. Uh, like I said, over $1,000 in prizes and giveaways. Uh, we've uh, we've got crossing guards. Keep everybody safe down there. It's uh, hopefully going to be a good, fun, safe event for everyone and uh, come out and bring lots of blood. I <laughs> bring lots of blood. And yes, uh, you bring your blood pudding. <laughs> well, I just want to say, guys, uh, it's been great having you guys on. Uh, Steve Lambert. It's my birthday on the Zombie Walk. And the Zombie Walk is James DeCale's birthday, so make sure you do come out for uh, yes, the doctor. Yes, it's my birthday. <laughs> that's right. I will be 29 again this year. Twenty nine ninety five <laughs> plus tax. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, folks, come on out for the Well and Zombie Walk. You're going to have a fantastic time. Come see James and Steve, Shannon, the defending champion, and uh, the rest of all us geeky ghouls that are going to be dressed up that <laughs> night uh, at the Well and Zombie Walk. Uh, big thanks, guys, for coming on out. And uh, like we said, look them up on Facebook, Well and Zombie Walk. It's a group out there. You can find it. You can join it. You can come on out. You can donate, dress up. Bring your family. Bring the kids. They're going to have a fantastic time. Thanks again to everybody who's listening. You guys listen every week. It's great of you guys all around the world. Just want to say a big thank you, a uh, big shout out. We love you all. Um, and, you know, you're listening to Rad G on 103.7 FM, CFBU, Brock University Radio, or CFBU.ca. And with that, we are gone. <laughs>